coronavirus. Coronavirus. The coronavirus pandemic is impacting all levels of baseball. It's something I don't think we've ever seen before. Baseball always bounces back, even through pandemics. We're a business that isn't a necessary business, but we're a business that's loved. We're going to do what's right. We're going to put safety first for our fans, for our players. And it takes everybody on our staff to really kind of help work together as a team. That everybody's committed to find a way to play baseball. And I think that's an important part of it. I think life is certainly a, a, a journey and one where we're always learning, um, but nobody could have predicted the impact on this crisis for us. Breaking news from the NBA, the league has been suspended. The men's and women's tournaments along with all winter sports have been canceled. Just like the NBA, the NHL has suspended this season. Um, you know, I, I've always tried to take a viewpoint that we're learning every day as we try to get better. Uh, but this, this one really tested uh, all of us. I'm not ashamed to say there were some dark days early in this pandemic where I really wondered what, uh, what this would mean for a business that was in the business of mass gatherings, right? And so we really worked very hard from the beginning to establish confidence, to put together protocols, to welcome fans back in a safe and um, I think a very insightful way. And I'm, I'm very proud of our team. I'm very proud of how we, we've approached this crisis. Um, I hope to never have to go through another one. Um, I think one pandemic every hundred years is probably a good cadence, uh, but we're, um, we're, we're proud to be on what I hope is the, the back end of it. We know we still have some, some work to do uh, and a ways to go, but I'm incredibly fortunate to be welcoming fans back officially for Rubber Ducks Baseball. My first thought when we got that email with the schedule, it was, wow, my, my job gets started now. There's a ton of work that is gonna start start right now you know a ton of puzzle pieces to put puzzle together even though I did have the 2020 schedule already done you know it doesn't I can't just flip it over and copy and paste it into a brand new year you're gonna see a lot of the same stuff that was in 2020 such as like Cone Town and anything we had like a jersey for or like a giveaway for you know we, we didn't hand that stuff out and we're gonna run that back in 2021 as we should right um, you know but I wasn't gonna run over the same exact same exact schedule from 2020 so there's a lot that goes into building the 2021 promotion schedule. On a typical year, not related to 2020, I would usually build this whole schedule around the celebrity appearances that I usually book in the early fall. Um, so this year, kind of working backwards, um, just waiting to get our schedule. Obviously, there was a little delay in that. Um, I'm kind of working backwards and building the schedule out with dates that I have set aside for some of our celebrity appearances for the season. Um, Kind of the way I set everything up here is um, get it all in a beautiful Excel sheet. So shout out Microsoft Excel for this beautiful contraption we have here. Um, this basically lists out all the game dates. Some of the highlighted stuff is literally just internally for me to keep everything organized. Um, basically each night lists out what's the giveaway, the fireworks, and the different sponsored elements that we have throughout the season. Um, and obviously you go all the way down, it's broken up by homestand. This year we have nothing but six game homestand, so it kind of made it easy to build this. But, um, you know, this lists out everything that we plan on uh, doing throughout the 2021 season. There's a couple still, a uh, few mo moving parts, but I feel pretty, pretty strongly about this and hopefully there's not many too, or too many moving parts moving forward and I can get this all set in stone. Um, obviously this goes from giveaways, fireworks, everything. And last but not least, some of my favorite parts, it includes our promo jerseys. So let's go ahead and jump into my favorite part of planning the 2021 promotion schedule. It's the specialty jerseys. First up, we got the 90s Cleveland basketball jersey. Obviously it looks just like a 90s Cleveland jersey, but also matches our color scheme absolutely perfect. After, after that one, we have the Waterboy jerseys. These look similar to the ones that were worn in the Bourbon Bowl with Baba Boucher. Next up, really excited about this one. It's the Cone Town with all the construction in Akron. We're giving a nod to you know, this is a celebration of all things rebuilding downtown Akron with the construction shirt jersey style. Here we have the Akron Black Tyrants jersey. Really excited about this one. We're giving a nod to Akron's own 
Negro League team that only played 10 games in Akron, but um, we kind of just got our art director, the mock-up, what he thought the Tyrants would look like, and I think he did a really good job and kept it really classic and really clean. And last but not least, we're gonna show you our own Copa identity, the Peros Calientes, which means hot dogs. But as you can see, we used really similar to the Rubber Ducks word mark and lettering, but kind of did our own little flair on it. And uh, obviously with the, the nice yellow, black and red, it's, it really pops. So really excited about this one. And we'll be wearing this about five times throughout the 2021 season. Yeah, so I, mean, I think we talked about this a little bit last year, but I would say Cone Town is probably my number one. Just uh, just that relationship we have with the, the city and there's actually a lot of construction in Akron. I think it, everybody can kind of relate to that with this promotion. And um, I think that was one I was super excited about, but also kind of our inclusive promotions that we have planned, you know, such as the Negro League night and uh, Paris Calientes and having the Cinco de Mayo celebration. And then also this year bringing back Pride, Pride Night to Canal Park and kind of working with Akron Pride on promoting that event and such. I, you know, bringing that inclusiveness back into the ballpark and this is the right year to do it. And I think it's awesome. Uh, the Black Tie Rights, while a lot of people may not know them because they weren't around very long, is still an important part of history. And uh, it goes along really well with kind of, you know, Major League Baseball's recent announce announcements that uh, the Negro League players' stats will count towards MLB stats and stuff. Um, so just creating that atmosphere and uh, for people to learn more about, you know, the Negro League, um, the Akron Black Tie Rights, and, um, and just really just more about the black history itself when it comes into baseball. We did a couple different things uh, for the month of February for Black History Month. Um, one of that was being a small business spotlight, so we had a lot of businesses and stuff kind of reach out, um, fill out a form for us on why they feel like their business kind of um, uh, deserved to be kind of highlighted and stuff like that. It made me feel really good because it kind of gives us as minority business owners an opportunity to, you know, showcase what we do and just kind of get our names out in public so that people know who we are. It means a lot. It makes me feel good because I, um, well, I have been in the community selling houses for more than 20 years. And so it's not very, very often that you know, other companies reach out to us to see who we are, what we do. So I felt honored. It was a gr it's a great way and initiative to kind of just, you know, spread the awareness of Black History Month and spread um, just the overall messaging that has kind of been been given the last year now. And as a, as a company, we're really trying to um, uh, do more, and and that was a great way for us to kind of get our. Um, to get our feet wet and to really start you know, planning what we're gonna be doing for the season and, and for years to come. Uh, we, first and foremost, must represent the community that we serve, both in the form of our staff and, the, and, and our fans and our, and our community. And so when you think about Akron in that light and you say, how do we create an environment in this, in this facility, in this building, where everybody feels welcome. You know, affordable family fun is not a mark of color, it's not a mark of race, it's not a mark of sexual preference, it's not a mark of gender. It's a, it's a, uh, it, it, it stands ultimately for what we think is most important, which is an openness and loving environment that we're trying to build here at the ballpark for our fans. And so those initiatives are obviously essential to doing so and we'll continue to find ways to continue to grow those over the years. 